Widespread voter apathy and vote buying mars the local government elections held in Lagos and Ogun states on Saturday. And you've done nothing deserving of commendation. PDP Publicity Secretary Kola Lobodion tells Governor Yahya Bello of Kogi State. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. Widespread voter apathy and vote buying characterized the local government elections held in Lagos and Ogun State on Saturday. Reports from different parts of the state show that many voters shunned the polls uh, for lack of interest in the exercise, fear of electoral violence, and lack of faith in the outcome of the elections. For instance, the uh, presiding officer at Ojodu Grammar School uh, 1, polling unit 17, Abel Obina, uh, said only seven persons had cast their votes as of 11.15 a.m. out of the 150 registered voters. In most streets in the councils that were visited, youths of voting age were seen playing football while major roads were empty due to the enforcement of no movement. Uh, well, joining us to discuss this is Plus TV Africa's correspondent Aneta Felix and Jacinta Obuku, uh, who visited the polling area and of course later on we'll be talking with Achike Chude who's a political affairs analyst. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for joining us. Great. Thank you. Good evening Miriam. Great. It's a pleasure. Great, great, great. So I'm going to start with you, just, um, I'm going to start with you, Aneta, obviously. Um, you were out on the streets on Saturday. I mean, I, I saw a news this morning uh, of a, a, a PDP cha party chairman in the state. Uh, at the time he showed up to cast his vote, he was the only person that had casted a vote at that polling unit, showing that many people were not even interested in the election. But give me a feel of what you actually experienced and, and you know, why you think people did not show up for that election. Okay, I think we should begin with the latest deployment of electoral materials. The election was supposed to begin at 8 a.m. and end around 3 p.m. on Saturday. But what happened was that when we visited the um, at Chiosa local government for Balinde um, on Saturday, we found that as at 9.30 a.m., um, full and addict staff of the Lagos State Independent Electoral Commission were still receiving election materials, uh, and they were actually uh, jam-packed outside the gates of the um, secretariat, waiting for buses that were designated to take them to different polling units in Etiosa local government area. So I think that really you know, is the beginning of the issue that we saw regarding the low voter turnout. So it's possible that maybe people had, you know, gone to their different polling units at 8 a.m., but they were still receiving their materials, so they definitely were nowhere to be found. So when eventually these buses came around and, you know, um, these electoral offices that you can see on your screen with the, you know, the plastic ball ballot boxes with the card readers. When they eventually set out to go there, you know, they, they had to, you know, begin to set up and ensure that all security measures were in place. And then what next um, happened was that I visited um, a ward in EJ. It was Ward 10, Poly Unit 2 in EJ, in um, Etiosa local government area. When I got there, you know, that morning, I found that there were less than 20 people who had come out to vote. I had assumed that, you know, it's early in the morning, people will still come out much later. But what I found, shockingly, was that rather than the crowds to increase, it instead declined. So I took a stroll into the estate in Dolphin Estate, and I found out that it seemed like a normal Saturday. People were, you know, around on the streets. People were having fun, you know, you know, talking with um, neighbors. It didn't seem like there was an election taking place a few steps away from them, you know, in Egypt. There was a primary school that was being used for the election. And it really makes me ask questions. Where did all our sensitization go? I mean, I co-host the Breakfast and Post TV Africa, and we've had, you know, um, we've had uh, stakeholders in politics who have representatives of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, come out to educate voters, educate Nigerians, because people didn't really seem interested. And then when I, you know, 
um, discuss with you know security experts, political experts as well. But, you know, the, the vibe I got from them was that a dissatisfaction by the public as to what's you know happening in the country probably is responsible. You mm -hmm. see that people feel that you know um, they are not being respected, they're not being valued by the government. You see the security issues in the country, so it seems that people simply were just you know displeased with the government, and maybe also we can add to. Maybe we, we didn't get enough sensitization of people. Maybe people didn't really um, register to vote, even though according to the statistics we have that about 6 million registered voters in Lagos, 13,323 polling units. But across Etiosa, across Lagos, the polling units were scanty. Hmm. Um, I mean, it begs the question if... The the, like you said, orientation was properly done because I remember there were people who were still asking us at Friday if the elections were going to be on that weekend or it was going to be this week that we're in. So meaning that the Lagos State SIEC probably didn't do its job or, or, or maybe again, it could be that people really don't care about the local government election. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to you, Anessa. Let me go to Achike. Achike, I, I'm curious to understand why um, we complain so much about government doing not doing this or not doing that but when it's time for us to make decisions by voting coming out to um, put a stamp on what we want government to do we're nowhere to be found I, and and i keep pointing to the fact that we're very good at tweeting and posting on social media but most of us don't have valid voters cards something as simple as local government elections we didn't see people show up for it and is it enough to just say that we are not happy with the government? Is that enough a reason for us to not show up to the polls? No, I do not think it's enough a reason. Um, though that it's a reason, but definitely cannot be enough reason. Especially when you know, I mean, uh, ultimately that um, our ability to get involved in the political process uh, goes a long way in um, putting some measure of um, pressure on uh, the political actors. Uh, to get them to do things that under normal circumstances they would not have done, uh, but uh, simply because uh, the people are there watching and the people are also involved and the people can play a role uh, in them getting elected or and re-elected. Uh, so, and, and uh, somebody has made that argument before that politicians, politicians usually like this level of apathy because it is, it, they find it much easier to manipulate the process when the people are not greatly involved in, the, in, the, in their own politics. But how, many uh, so, uh, but how many Nigerians know that? Because you see, you just, you just went to the next thing that I was going to point out to. Um, there's a video that surfaced on social media. It's been making the rounds of a woman who was, you know, thumbprinting on different ballot papers there's so many questions to that video where did she get those ballot papers that obviously means that somebody within um the lagos state siec uh, had facilitated those ballot papers getting into her hands it means that the siec in the state is also complicit results in that area wherever it was needs to be re recounted or something needs to be done about it and and how many heads do we make sure uh, get rolled so Yes, there are people who take advantage of the fact that people don't show up, so let's thumbprint, and then you see a large turnout. Meanwhile, in other places, there was nobody. So, but how many Nigerians realize that they're losing and these politicians, in quote, are winning? Yeah, I, I, I think you have put it uh, succinctly. I, I want to believe that uh, there are so many Nigerians again, and that is the, the way we find ourselves in a season season of anomaly, where those things that should matter to the people do not exactly matter to them, and uh, where people are not able to make the connection between the life they are living now, the lives they will live in future, and the, the politics of the day that determines the quality of life that they are going to live. So they have not been able to make that connection, and that, I think that that is the is the unfortunate situation. And it's not even as if that they do not realize that um, when they get involved, you know, with the right kind of uh, you know politics, that uh, things can change. But if you look at, I mean, the order of elections in this country, uh, the fact that you have elections at the national level, presidential level, governorship level, you have elections to the various uh, uh, you know houses of assembly as well 
as National Assembly. And you realize that uh, in the scale, on the scale of importance, that it would occur that the local government uh, council elections, which under normal circumstances, because of its proximity to the people and, and because of its ability to touch, impact more directly the lives of the people, but you will find out that paradoxically, it is the least important of the elections. And so when you weigh most of these elections that are going on in this country, in terms of notoriety, uh, you know, you find out that uh, the most notorious in terms of uh, the outcome of uh, local of elections in the country is the local government election. Why do I say so? It is very clear that things are not working exactly uh, well, well across the length and breadth of this country at the local government levels. It's not just Lagos State, virtually in all the states of the country. So when you talk about you know failure of governance, you also have to start from the grassroots, and that is the local government elections. But when you look at it, when you consider the fact that uh, you know uh, most of the local government, and that is a consensus among, among most Nigerians across the states, across political party lines, that local government, you know, uh, uh, the chairman and the councillors are not doing much to change the lives of the people. Then the question you ask yourself is, how come that in virtually every state in the country where local government elections are held, there is a 90 to 100 percent you know, uh, success rate for the party, for the political party in charge of the state, uh, in those states. That's a whole, so that's a whole, an that's idea. another kettle of fish on its own. And I want us yeah. to revisit it. You know, we will revisit it. But we've okay, been good. joined by one of our correspondents, um, Jacinta Obiku, who also was uh, in town to cover uh, some of the proceedings of the elections on Saturday. Um, Jacinta, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. Just give us an idea of what you experienced um, while covering the um, elections, the local government elections on Saturday. Okay, so um, I didn't get that, but I, I, I assume you are asking um, what I observed during the election. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, so um, the part of... Um, the areas where observed in Lagos, some part of the Lagos, uh, I could tell it was peaceful. I started from Ajawi State, although um, the first one, the first polling unit I got to, um, the presiding officer there complained of the card reader uh, of um, not working, and we saw him putting a call across to get it rectified. And um, people were already eager to vote. People were already queued in waiting for the whole procedure session to the whole um, delay. And uh, so we left there to first start. First start two was peaceful, but just no turnout there. Then from there, we went to Ikeja. And uh, we've, we met with um, one, um, the PDP chairman that was... Um, uh, I mean, the state PDP chairman there, and he complained bitterly um, over the low turnout of voters. And that could tell, and he said that, that could tell how people don't believe in the um, electoral process anymore in the country. And um, he as well called on his um, counterparts, political counterparts, to do better. I know that uh, this is no longer for them. Um, about them, but about the people. So as well, we moved down to Osborne, uh, pulling unit there, where we witnessed um, people, uh, we saw some agents, political agents there, that they were complaining of missing pulling units there. And uh, they, they said this could suggest um, election region and all of that. Hmm. Uh, so, but generally, I, I can tell how, like, what I witnessed, it was peaceful, except for the law, turn out of voters. In terms of the, the, the missing polling units, did you probe further to ask the SIEC members if, you know, um, INEC had made them aware uh, of these polling units not being available or it was just an oversight uh, by the SIEC? Did you find out? Yeah, yeah we, we tried finding out from the, the, the officers we met that they just said they don't know. They were just sent there to... Um, do their own part. They don't know about the other uh, polling unit that is missing. But the agents there said there are supposed to be two in that area, like two in different areas there in Osborne, but it's just one one. And they can't see the a senior uh, political and um, a senior INEC official to ask uh, where about the polling unit. Mm. So the other ones that is the one, the very one uh, polling unit. 
the uh, officials said they don't have an idea why um, others are missing. And wow. it was a concern for uh, voters there and as well the agents there. Well, Jacinta Buku is one of our correspondents here in Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much, Jacinta, for speaking with us. I'm going to go back to... Um, I'm going to go back to Aneta because Aneta, I remember we also, uh, Plus TV had a trending video of a woman who was given a thousand naira um, to vote. Uh, what particular polling unit was that and what area? That was at Ward 10, that same polling unit too that I, that I mentioned that I went to in EJ. That was, you know, just before the entrance of the estate, um, a Dolphin, and uh, that's at uh, Ikoyo Oban in the Atisa local government area. So I had been hearing that, you know, party agents were distributing a thousand naira each, you know, if you voted for their party. Well, I, I said I needed to get evidence of that, and I watched closely, and I you know, observe that indeed some party agents whom I had personally met and spoken to, you know, at the secretariat, you know, were actually giving up our money. I brought up my phone immediately, started to capture that, and I saw, you know, party agents giving a thousand naira to women. Then I w went to one of the women who received that one thousand naira, as you're seeing on your screen. I went into her and I said, oh, I see you're collecting a thousand naira um, simply for voting. That why did you do that? Why did you decide to sell your vote? And her answer was, I don't know. I've really thought about that answer since her answer since Saturday, asking myself, is this really what poverty is, you know, has made of us as, as a country? And I remember that some other party agents had gone there to complain to the security agents, the uh, police officers who were there. And the response was that whatever happened outside the gates of the police units was not their concern, that they were deployed to the police units to make sure that the operations of the election were smooth. And whatever is happening outside the gate was none of their business. Hmm. And indeed, this was happening out, just outside the gate. Now, if you take a look at that video that I sent you, um, you find that these party agents, first of all, the school has a low fence. So these party agents, I don't know if maybe they find a way to talk to the people, they bait them, and then they overthrow the low fence. And then once you come out, they hand you a thousand naira. It's just so sad. I mean, the reaction we've gotten on social media has been massive. People even saying, oh, they've even doubled the money. That some elections ago, they were distributing 500 naira. And we know this is nothing new in Nigeria. It's just the hard evidence that seems to be lacking when we talk about the stories. You know, the fact that I was able to, in the spot of that moment, bring out my phone to capture when that woman was receiving a thousand naira and interrogate her. You know, so we know that this is something that happened. Yeah. Nigerian party agents you know, distributing money simply to buy votes. So you say, you ask the question that is this where poverty has led us as a people, but do you, do you really think it's poverty or is ignorance? Because if, I mean, yes, poverty can be, you know, uh, it can be a problem, but really could it also be ignorance at play? Because she probably doesn't even know, and that's her answer. Uh, and she doesn't even know the consequences. Maybe, I'm saying maybe, she doesn't even know the consequences of that 1,000 naira that she's taken and whatever party that she voted for. Exactly, Marianne. One of the first questions I asked, you know, when I was brought in was, where did, lot, where did all our sensitization go? So it, it, it then seems like we're not seeing a lot. Maybe we are over 200 million and it seems that our voices, you know, are not loud enough. Our voices are not reaching the ears of people they, they're supposed to reach. Because, I mean, look at an election as basic as a local government election. I mean, how bad can it get? If we're talking about a local government election, people who are coming out for champ and chairmanship um, positions, chairmanship candidates, councillor, um, and, you know, aspirants and all of that. These are people that should be closed, close to the grassroots. These are people that, you know, the community should know. These are people that should be known in the community. These are people that should be influential. These are people that should have already been doing things. Because, I mean, if you love your community... Oh dear, I, I, I think we're having connection problems with Anessa, so we'll just let, let her go for a second. Uh, if her connection is great, we'll bring her back. But back to you at 2K today. Um, 
Anessa has raised some of the issues I wanted to raise. Um, how many of us really understand that the government that we need most is the government that's closest to us the most? And I'm talking about local elections. I'm talking about local governments. Uh, because we as Nigerians seem to somewhat um, accord the responsibilities of our local government to states and mostly the federal. So um, the gutter in your area is blocked or or maybe you have a problem, you know, a local government problem. And then you say Buhari is not doing his job. Buhari is bad. Buhari must go. Um, that is also, a, a, you know, a result of the ignorance on our part. But when these people who are running for offices, whether they belong to party A, B, C, D, or E, how many of these people do we know? How many of these people can we say we understand their track record or can vouch for to even vote for? Because, I mean, really, it's one thing to come out and vote. It's another to know who you're voting for. Um, especially in Lagos State, do we really pay attention to our local leaders? Do we want to know them or we're more interested in Governor Samolu? Well, I, I think it's, um, it speaks um, to the problems that we have in this country. Um, and it's all over. Um, it would appear that there is a sense uh, in which it would appear it would seem that uh, the people have given up, you know, when it comes to governance. And uh, people are no longer interested in what um, happens, uh, you know, uh, with regards to the politics of their country. So they all believe that the only way to get by is just to face those things that matter most to them but they do not see the connection between like i've said and the policies that are you know taken that are being dished out on a daily basis by government officials and the way their lives turn off and so this has been a major uh, issue it's the inability to understand that connection uh, that uh, that they that they ought to be in, much more involved than they are than they have been involved, uh, you know, in the politics of uh, their their country, especially the you know the the, the politics within their immediate um, environment. I think that that has been the uh, you know uh, issue, and 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 they get, Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, uh, so so th that has that has been uh, uh, the problem, uh, but but beyond that again is the fact that yes, uh, we, we know that uh, to to some extent poverty uh, has played a very terrible role in uh, emasculating the Nigerian people politically, uh, but at the same time you talked about uh, ignorance. Ignorance has also uh, played its own, uh, it made its own share of uh, played its own you know role, and uh, as well as. Um, uh, uh, you know, sentiments, on, on due sentiments too, especially when it comes to national elections. Uh, but beyond that, it would also appear, and that is one thing that a lot of us are, are failing to grasp, and that is that, uh, that the political parties are the ones that have a duty to ensure that, they are, that, that, that voters come to vote for them because they are the greatest losers of an election that goes badly for them, and they are the greatest you know, beneficiaries of elections in which they have, you know, played a role in which they have won. So everything about election campaigning, it's about how to bring the people to the polls, to the police stations. And so if the, ultimately at the end of the day, it comes to election time and you do not have the people coming to the polls to vote, it simply means that the, both politicians and the politicians and the political parties have failed in the ability to get their messages across, to be able to get the people to the polling stations uh, to, to vote. But perhaps there's a reason for that. Perhaps they believe that they don't need to spend so much money because ultimately they know that the results of the elections have been written. And, and, and that is ultimately the, in, in, you know, the, the mindset of, of the people. And that's why I did ask the question. You know, I, or I made the observation that in virtually all of the elections that take place, especially at the level of local government councils, about 95% or 100% of, of victories in those elections, uh, you know, go to the party in power, you know, the party of the day in but, power. But, but, but whose responsibility, is, whose, whose yes. responsibility is it to make that change? Because, like, you are one of the electorates, obviously. You yeah. are one of those people who's complaining that, oh, if the PDP is in power, the PDP sweeps yeah. the local government. I yeah. mean, literally happens across all the states of the Federation for the state governors who I agree. who've decided. Yeah, to, Mar Miriam, but, but, Miriam. But, but the yeah. onus, who, where is the onus? Who, who has the responsibility of changing that? Because if, if no. like you just said, if, if political parties take it upon themselves to not just campaign when it's time for campaign season, 
especially at the local levels. Acquaint yourselves with the people in those areas so they know who you are and not what you're about, but who you are. And, and then they now decide what you're about and decide if they want to vote for you. But we only see these people when it's time for elections. And then you hope that people would vote for you because maybe the government of the day is not doing right. Yes, you see, obviously, you see, the Can issue is Can you expect is, magic to happen? Right. You know, you're absolutely right. So, but, but what it means, yes, I agree that that should be the thing. You know, uh, 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 because they, it is because it is uh, the government that is closest to the people. So the possibility, there's a greater possibility that the people would be in a better position to know them. They see them on the streets, they know their children and all of that. But obviously that is not happening. And the politicians are not even reaching out to them street to street to talk to these people. And why are the politicians not doing that? Because they also know they also enjoy the apathy of the people because ultimately, whether out of you know an electorate of about a hundred thousand, maybe fifty people, a hundred people cast their vote, they are going to be declared as winners of that you know political process. So it doesn't really matter to them, even if they don't spend as much as they used to. They used to spend. Like that's why I say that ultimately, voter apathy is more beneficial to the politicians because they make a lot. They make a lot of you know. Uh, 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 they, they take a lot of mileage, you know, from 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 the apathy of, of the people. But ultimately, I agree with you. It is the people themselves. They are the greatest stakeholders in the political process because they are the biggest victims of right. uh, you know, an election that has gone wrong. You know, and then if 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 they have competent you know people in power, they are the ones that benefit you know also from okay. that process. But okay. the fact that they are not doing that also shows that the people and themselves are not responsible. And so what you have is an abdication of political responsibility by the people themselves. Okay. And ultimately, if there is a you know a price that will be paid, the people themselves are going to pay the price. So when people well, we're already we're, 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 we're already that, paying that price, aren't we? Oh, we are, we are, because exactly. I mean, people talk about so, so, uh, talk about about the cost of foodstuffs in the country. People talk about bad roads. People talk about insecurity. People talk about, but you are not doing anything to put pressure on the people who have a constitutional mandate to get these things done. You are well, not doing that. You are abdicating your responsibility, and then the next thing is just to hold them responsible when things do not go well. But the people, perhaps, are even much more res irresponsible than the than the politicians. Yeah. Well, Anessa is back. Anessa, in closing, you and I obviously obviously are representatives of the fourth estate of the realm and half the time when you know West com when it comes down to it you know the media is pointed at and and they say oh you're not doing enough to sensitize the people we and then we also know that NOA comes alive just quarter to the elections which is not enough time for the kind of voter education that we're looking at um, but we also notice Annette I'm sure you covered the elections in 2019 um, and the level of you know low turnouts wasn't as bad as this obviously but you know um, could this also be a you know a pointer to what we might be expecting in 2023 with the you know the dampened spirits of the average Nigerian voter what are your expectations um marianne you took the words right out of my mouth i was thinking to myself um just before this meeting asking myself what witnessed during you know saturday's local government elections could this possibly be a pointer to what we're about to witness in 2023 and i fear for our political future because if you know youth do not come out to represent themselves in the electoral process come 2023 I really wonder what our future would look like because we continue to complain on social media about the lack of infrastructure, about just the death of everything in the country regarding politics, so you know, our socioeconomic uh, reality, everything, education. And I like how Mr. I think that Anessa is frozen again, unfortunately. Achike Chide, I, I, I want to thank you. We, we have to go. We're almost out of time. Achike Chide is a political affairs analyst, and Aneta Felix is uh, an anchor of the breakfast show here on Plus TV Africa, and she's also our correspondent. We also want to say thank you to Jacinta Obiku, who is also one of our correspondents here in Plus TV Africa. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies, for being thank part you. of the conversation. It's a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be discussing the performance of the Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello, and of course, what the PDP uh, Publicity Secretary has to say about it. But yes, we will be joined by the Honorable Commissioner uh, for Information in Kogi State. Stay with us.